Hi and welcome to 2016, question B2. Uh, so this question is kind of a conics question uh, with some orthographic and oblique stuff shown in there as well. So the image on the right shows a location, or sorry, a ho hotel located beside the River Shannon in Limerick. Two views of the architectural model for similar structure are shown in our 3D, and the outline of projections of the structure are given here below in the figure B B2. The plan is based on an ellipse, so we've got an ellipse shape here, and you can see we've got our minor axis and our major axis lengths, uh, reflecting the city's ruby tradition, okay, so our ellipse kind of replicating the, the ruby ball. The top surface of the of the structure is a parabolic, so it's parabolic there, as indicated it's curve ABC in elevation and B is the vertex, so that's the top of our parabola. One side of the structure has been <coughs> shaped to produce a flat vertical surface as shown. Draw the given plan and elevation of the structure. So just look here, we've got our scale that we need to account for. So scale of 1 is to 100, so just for example, 20 or 2 meters is 20 millimeters, 6 meters is 60 millimeters, 90 or 9 meters is 90. So it's a pretty easy conversion there. So I'm going to start off by drawing my ellipse. Okay, just sometimes it, they might give you a little indication saying draw the given plan and elevation rather than elevation and plan. So I just because of that I like to go with the plan first. So we have distance here that we need to come away from our xy 1.5 to the start of our ellipse. So let's measure that. 5 here, and then 60. Halfway would be the location of my line or my major. Draw that across, and that is going to be, like I said, it's 10 meters, so 100. So 50 on either side. Okay, so I'm going to draw my ellipse now using the concentric circles method. So major circle. I'll we'll try and draw this kind of light up to come up on the screen around the video, uh, but I just don't want it to be, um, I suppose too heavy uh, because it might make things confusing for me later when I'm doing the orthographic views and stuff. So, so my major, major and minor, 60, 30. Circles cut, I draw towards the major axis. So major, major. Curve it.
Okay, so plan view there, completed of the ellipse. And then project that outside of it. Oh, so I'll use that for my elevation. And center of it up also, because that's going to be in line with the top of my parabola, the vertex. So, the next measurements now we've got a height of 140 and another 40 on top of that. So, let's measure in along the center. 140. And 40, so that's my vertex. Okay, so my vertex B, right there. And that's. this easy myself. Rather than doing dividing line with equal parts, I know I have five equal divisions here. But it's fifty. So that makes life a little bit easier of course. Okay, and then up down the side is 40 divided by 5 is 8, so I can actually measure 8 there between each one of those. Now, you could also use the construction to divide a line into equal parts, that's completely fine as well, but I'm just trying to save time. symmetry then to find the other half of my parabola. Okay, and then we've got this uh, flat vertical section coming to our shape, which is 2 meters in, so 20 millimeters. My elevation. Got my okay, so I probably should have those done in lightly, <coughs> but I do have a pen, so um, can't undo that. So we've got next up, we've got a 
plane elevation completed. Project an end view in the direction of arrow E. So arrow E is here. So looking in from that side, we're going to create an, uh, an end elevation over on the right hand side. So we're going to be using the points that we have up here in elevation, project them down onto our curve and finding them up here. Okay, for kind of our free end curve, I suppose, kind of shape that we're going to have there, and it will be vertical after that. So, the outline of it. Okay, so projected the uh, overall width, overall height. So now we're going to start taking these points that I found, projecting them down onto my curved surface, and back up and around. So that first uh, point there is actually found one or two points, so bring them up and find them in our elevation. So let's project up, project across all these points that we found. Each point projected up into the elevation or to the end elevation. And now we're projecting vertically. Okay. So I'll actually project these across so I can see where I need to stop each one of them. Okay, so I'll start in the middle and work my way out. So first point. Okay, spanning point. That's the outline of my curve, so I'll draw that in now.
Na jó, szó. Oké, a last little bit we can't forget is this vertical section, so it's actually already been projected across here. Okay, so that is my end elevation, showing my hidden detail and the free end curve. Perfect. So take that off. Okay, now part C. So part C, an architectural feature in the form of a steel band is to be constructed around the outside of the structure as shown in our 3D graphic. So we've got our 3D graphic with this kind of red band there going around it. Draw the given, sorry, our VT and HT traces uh, for the cutting plane are defined, sorry, the VT and HT are the traces of an inclined cutting plane used to define the position of the shape of the steel band. So we've got our VT here and our HT. Okay, so our vertical trace and horizontal trace of this cutting plane. Determine the true shape of the intersection between the structure and its inclined cutting plane. Okay, so they want us to find the true shape of that band. It is not necessary to show the steel band in either the plan or elevation, just the true shape of it. Okay, so what we want to do first of all is we're going to find our VT and HT. So our VT is up 120, 12 meters 120, and our HT is down 90, 9 meters or 90. So up 120. So there's our VT dash in it. Indicate that using. Um, Green. Actually, screen. Show it a little bit better. So this is my VT. is down 90 That's the location of my traces. Now we want to find those traces in the elevation of or the end elevation. Okay, so let's project from here because that's kind of my end vertical plane there. So that's where it intersects it. So let's project that up 45 degrees. Right there, that's a point view of my HT. That's the HT. And then my vertical plane is here, so my VT is contained on that. Okay, so that comes across, and here's my vertical plane in this position for my end view. So right here is actually my VT. Okay, so 
what we want to do now is we want to show that the actual inclined plane, okay, the, the cutting plane. So, right there, that is the cutting plane. Okay, that's my cutting plane. So, we want to find the true shape of the surface that's created by that cutting plane. So I'm going to take an auxiliary view looking at perpendicular to that. I'll just set that at a nice angle first. Nice. No. Okay, so slide and set squares. Auxiliary projected from the elevation or end of elevation. So what we've got our X one Y one here. take distances okay so we have points already kind of determined through the points that we projected up you can just see even here that point that point that point and there's one more actually there's one at this exact point here wait right, one two three four on this side so those points their corresponding points are down here in my elevation so we're actually going to be taking heights from here, from this line, back. So these are my points, I actually need to project them out, first of all. I'm just going to find the centre points first, that will just give me kind of a bearing. So that and that. There are my stern points. Front to the back. There's actually an axis running through my object. So I just want to draw that, just kind of, it'll help us to kind of find our bearings. So that's an axis running through. So that's the centre. Of our, of our curve. So that line represents the 
position of these. So I could, yeah, just to save time, I'm going to take the distances from, here's my center line, this is the corresponding center line. So I'm going to distance, get distances from the center here. I'll be able to find corresponding points. So, yeah, from the center, and this point doesn't actually exist because it's cut off. So it's gone. So that is a point. Down to my next set of points. So that, and that, at the same distance with the point that we don't actually have there and there, but we'll show them on the side that we need them. So the next set, one, two, that's actually where the cut is going to happen, so I'm going to use that on both sides, so I need that there, and so here, here, and that. points. One, two, three, and four. So this is the outline of the true shape. Okay, I mean our vertical cut results in actually a straight line running from this point to this point. Now if you wanted to index all these points, it would make life a bit easier for you to follow along. So, a free end curve then. It's actually like a circle. It's quite circular in shape. So, when you think about why that is, that is because we have an ellipse. Okay, yeah. So let me just double check this. This would pretty, be pretty close to a circle in shape. It's, it might even be a perfect circle. Not far off. So you might have been able to draw that using a circle as well. So, okay, that is our true shape found. And is there anything else left in that? We have our bend. We don't need to show them all those reviews. So no, that's true shape completed on the 2016 question B2.